was weird. All right. This one. Hello. Hi there. My name is Brendan, and this is Accidental Origin, the weekly writing web show. How's everyone's week been? My week's been good. Doing a lot of things. Doing a lot of things. It's playing around with the lighting a little bit more. I don't really like this setup though. I kind of ran out of time. Uh, it's way too much glare off that back back wall there. Hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, I didn't actually make an outline today. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I kind of ran out of time. <laughs> so I didn't make an outline today, but that's fine. Uh, I had a general concept for what I wanted to do for the episode. So we're going to continue with that. Uh, and I don't think, well, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. I've been having a lot of conversations with my friends who watch me stream. <laughs> I've been having much conversation with, with my friends who watch the stream about the format, about what I'm trying to do, the, the effect I'm going for. And It's been kind of up in the air because I, I started Accidental Origin as a teaching stream to teach writing from start to finish, to show the entire process, to show the, the bits that you don't usually get to see, the drafting process, the ideas, the brainstorming, uh, the sort of weird up in the airness that that happens with with writing, and I think I'm showing that. I think I'm showing elements of that. But there's also this giant section in the stream where I kind of lecture at you, and there's some interesting things there, uh, but it's not all interesting. Not all the time, anyway. Um, yeah. Because, I mean, I mean, even last episode, when I started talking about intertextuality, like, I got super academic and just, and just went crazy off the rails there. <laughs> Which is fine. It's good to do those things. But, yeah. I... I wonder... I wonder if my issue is that in an effort to make it more approachable to to people who aren't familiar with writing, I'm actually making it less approachable. Like that that's kind of that's kind of the feeling I'm getting where it's almost like I'm trying too hard and because of that it's it's becoming less interesting. So yeah, like like I've been saying the last little while, I mean, feel free to give me feedback. Send me a message, send me an email, whatever. Uh, contact info on the website below. There's, there's links and stuff. Uh, so feel free, tell me what works, tell me what doesn't. I, I wanna know, I wanna adapt. Change up what I'm doing so that it can be more interesting, both for me and for the viewer. Um, cause, cause like, I, well, I mean, I didn't make a plan for this episode either, right? 
Um, well, well, that's on that's on your end, McKelly. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> um, yeah, cause cause I didn't make I didn't make an outline for this episode, but I'm not sure if me just rambling is coherent in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> Uh, cause I have a tendency to do that. My thought process is hard to follow even for me sometimes. So, you know, I'm trying new things. I'm trying to mix it up. I'm trying to bring a new attitude, element, theme, playfulness. I don't know. There's a word. I'm not sure which one it is yet. Uh, so yeah, thoughts I had. Thoughts I had about streaming. I'm enjoying streaming. Streaming is fun. <laughs> it's interesting. The elements of live interaction is super cool. I want to use it more. I want my chat to be bumping. Um, <laughs> brain Dan. I kind of love that. That's kind of amazing. What else was I thinking? So what the blah blah blah. No no no. Silly face this time. Um Johnny and I were talking this week and I sometimes have a hard time expressing what I'm feeling. And I think that has a lot to do with my personality type and a lot to do with just just the way I am. Which is cool. I mean, we're all different, right? We all have different things. Uh, in a lot of ways, writing is my means of, of, of expressing those things, right? Um, and I do that a lot. I write a lot. <laughs> um, so there's certainly that. Uh, but I got asked the question of, of why are you streaming? What are, you, what are you trying to get out of it? What are you trying to do? And, and the superficial answer... <laughs> yeah, I really do. The superficial answer is that... I want to teach people how to write. And, and that's true to a certain extent, but that's not really the real answer. The real answer... Be real with your feelings, Biro. Be real with your feelings. The real answer is that I want to have interesting conversations about art and creativity. And I use the word art as in the arts in general. Uh, music, movies, writing, art, like visual art. I want to push people in their creativity and in their skills. Because I love doing that. I love pushing myself. I love, I love it when others... Uh, are challenged by the things I say and and not challenged well yeah they, they they feel inspiration from the things I say I guess is a better way of putting it you know they push themselves um, and there was one other thing what was the other thing let me just check this real quick Rolling up. Uh, and, and this is why sometimes having an outline really helps me. <laughs> um, where did that conversation go? Jesus. I don't even know. Wow. Where? It's gonna it's gonna bug me if I don't find it. All <laughs> um. oh, right. Yeah. And of course. Yeah, so awesome conversation about art. 
challenge people right in front of an audience to get feedback, to see what people think, to see what I can improve, how to improve my own skills. Um, yeah, Th those are the three things that I'm trying to do. And I don't know if the, the regular format or the format I've been using is really effective at doing that. So here's me. I'm trying to change it up. I'm trying to change it up. Um, this episode is going to be entirely practical. I'm going to try. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to try and uh, not divulge into theory at all, unless asked. Um, if people want to be talk about theory, I will. <laughs> I have no problems with that. But. Uh, I'm not going to just like start off with theory and then show you examples. I'm just going to show you the examples and you can ask questions and feel free to ask questions, by the way. Uh, a couple of people have mentioned that uh, sometimes it feels like I'm hard to approach because uh, I'm, I'm kind of like doing my thing and I, I'm cool. Ask questions. Please ask questions. Uh, I put the new uh, this thing here with the the messages. Uh, I put that up there so a people could see the people watching the vods could see the chat and what I'm referring to a little bit more. But also because I spend a lot of time actually looking at the video preview more so than any other screen. Uh, I find it helps me. It helps me get a feel for what I'm doing. So. With things popping up there, I'm going to see the chat a little bit easier, and I'm going to try and respond to the chat more. Um, yeah. It's something that I wasn't sure if I wanted to do at the beginning. If I, I wanted to, because I post to YouTube and because of the, the way that it was kind of a lesson format, I didn't want to spend that much time uh, like read, like I didn't want to spend that much time interacting with chat, but I realized that that's probably the wrong way to approach this, that I want conversations to happen. And the only way they're going to happen is through chat. So maybe I need to be more open, play with it a bit more, challenge my own ideas. And Johnny also mentioned in the conversation on Discord that I was totally just scrolling through uh, that sometimes it takes me a while to get back to a question, and it does. So if you ask a question and I don't get to it right away, uh, please don't think I'm ignoring you. I will, I will get there. <laughs> uh, but I need to finish my train of thought or this is going to be an incoherent mess. It just, it just is. Can you imagine if I stop mid-sentence every single time? Confusing enough as it is. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's okay, Mikhail. Have a good one, man. So yeah. Thoughts I've been having. Thoughts I've been having about streaming. Um, next week, uh, just to talk about stuff that I kind of have coming up or am planning in regards to, to these changes and also just to uh, my life schedule in general. Next week, I am planning on doing a special thing because it's, uh, it's actually my birthday next week. So I'm going to be doing a special thing on the, the Sunday episode. Keep an eye out for announcements on that. I uh, should have some special guests. Hopefully. I'm still working on it. But I, ho I hope that happens. Um, but then I'm on holidays that week from work. So I'm going to be doing a, a daily stream for that week. I have to uh, nail a time out for when I want to do that because I'm not, I'm not entirely sure yet. 
I think it'll be in the afternoon. Because uh, I don't really want to do evenings. But I don't want to jump around that much also. Uh, what I'll do is uh, in my Discord, I will make a... Uh, I will make a, a straw pool or something like that with sort of a, a general time slots sort of thing for when people think would be better. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I've decided I will do that. Uh, yeah, I lost my train of thought there. So, I'm going to do the main drafting of Accidental Origin, or, sorry, of Accidental Origin, of the short story we're working on during that week. So that I can kind of get that done, and I don't have to spend, like, two months working on it, uh, stuff like that. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping... Uh, this is kind of a trial for me too, for my skills and the way that I write, that having streaming it will keep me on task a bit more and I can get, be productive, be very productive with that. Um, so yeah, we're, we're gonna try it out, see how it goes. Um, yeah, so that's what I got upcoming. That's my plan. Nice, Ronnie. Um, yeah, and, and what I mean by drafting is I'm going to be uh, tippity tapping out the first draft of the short story. Uh, I plan on doing one scene a day because I have six days and six scenes. So I, I think that's a good plan. <laughs> it sounds very reasonable. So yeah, that's my plan. And, and feel free to, uh, to give me feedback if, if you think that there's something I can do better with that or if you have an idea. I'm all about creativity. I realize that, that like, I like ideas. I like ideas that challenge us. I like ideas that force us to think. I like ideas that sort of challenge the status quo in, in a lot of ways. Um, yeah. And, and because I'm that type of person, I try and be as open as I can to getting that from other people. You know, if I want to challenge people, then I have to be willing to be challenged. It's a two way street. It, you know, that's, that's the way it is. Um, so yeah, thoughts, Brendan rambling, more thoughts. <laughs> so yeah, um, so we're about 20 minutes in, which is cool. I like, I like having kind of an intro talky portion. It doesn't have to be theory, but just to kind of get off my chest what all the things that are going on, what I think, what other people have thought, feedback I'm getting. You're doing a good job of challenging me, Johnny. You're just not challenging me in the ways that you think you're challenging me. <laughs> I mean, you challenge me when it comes to streaming and when it comes to format and uh, feelings and touchy feels and all those things that I'm not great at. <laughs> and, and you might be like, well, Brendan, how can you be a writer if you're not in touch with feelings? And it's like, no, I'm, I'm good with character feelings. I'm just not good with my own feelings.
So yeah, does anyone like, uh, I'll just open it up a little bit here. If anyone has any uh, thoughts about anything I've just said, or wants to ask me a question, or whatever, please do so. Um, yeah, please do so. I'm just making some notes for things to do later. Straw poll for drafting week. So, in that case, what we're gonna do is we're going to start working on some characters. Because why not? I mean, that's what we're here for, right? That's what we're here for. So, uh, because I'm not trying to do theory today, like, I'm purposely trying not to do theory, <laughs> instead of being all like, oh, what do you think, blah, 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 uh, character, blah, feelings, blah, uh, I'm, I'm just going to do it. <laughs> I'm just going to start working on characters and show you kind of some research that I've been doing, uh, thoughts I've had, various things coming together uh, from, from all the weeks that we've worked on this. So, we're gonna start here. Siren. Uh, so I have open here. A, uh, ooh, that's not readable. Yeah, there's good. I have here, open here, a list on Wikipedia of Greek mythological creatures. And for those unfamiliar with uh, Greek mythology, there is a ton of, of, one-off creatures and a lot of stories. Uh, there's a few that are really famous, uh, such as uh, the Hydra. The Hydra uh, is really famous. It's in the, uh, the, the Trials of Hercules. Uh, the a couple others being the Cyclops from the Odyssey, the Sirens, uh, which we're going to come back to, and, uh, oh, what's the one? The one with the birds. The bird ladies? Bird harpies. That's the one. Harpies are super famous. And the gorgons. Uh, specifically Medusa, more than any of the others. But yeah, the Greeks are huge fans of mixing things with things. So there's a lot of, like, half horse, half humans and half human half animals and horse human fishes and lion snakes and <laughs> all kinds of crazy things but the one thing i wanted to look at today was a sirens uh because our main character is a siren so that's totally a thing uh, B, it's not here right now, but I will pull it up at some point, is uh, Fawns. Because again, another character is a Fawn. And then, where did it go? Uh, Ah, uh, here, these 
guys. There was another term for them, but what was it? Ah, it doesn't matter. I'll get back to it. I will get back to it. Here we go. These are the one. Gotcha. All right. Well, we'll, we'll come back to that. Ooh, I don't need this open. <laughs> the Greeks had a lot of time on their hands. Pretty much is the way it goes. Well, I'm just gonna pop this over to the other window for a sec. So the reason I want to have this this research open. What are you doing? What are you doing? There we go. Is because there are a set number of of sirens uh, in Greek mythology, and because we're doing uh, a classical fantasy. It's forming thoughts, forming thoughts. Because we're doing a classical fantasy, there's definitely going to be some heavy Greek influences. Um, so it would make sense because sirens are almost immortal creatures um, that it, we should pick a siren of sorts. Um, yeah. And that's awesome, Drani. Uh, thinking about weird combinations and, and all those things is an excellent way to build characters, to build creatures. Um, there's... I mean, Jonah, Jonah Loeb, a, uh, an art streamer on here, talks a lot about the creation of the Rancor. Um, because he was heavily influenced by the Rancor. And the guy who made the Rancor from Star Wars, by the way, just in case you didn't get that reference. Uh, I can't remember his name offhand. But he said that the Rancor was basically a cross between a bear and a potato. That's interesting, Fabagoo. Um, what do you mean by well, I guess, what do you mean by that statement? <laughs> um, I think I get what you're saying, but I'm curious. I'm curious as to why you always go in in that way. Hmm. Elaborate. Elaborate and we will talk about it. Have conversation. So, siren, siren. So, the sirens, I'm gonna write some notes. Well, you know what? We can do this. It's gonna be in focus. Should probably zoom in a little bit, eh? Uh, 
Oh, that's weird. Focus properly. It wants to focus on me. There we go. There we go. So sirens. Um, Like, my grain is always on the go. I never stop to think because I just want to get everything out of my head as quickly as possible, if that makes any sense. Just anything I really do. I mean, that totally makes sense. I have a friend who does that. Um, we've, we've talked a little bit on stream about process and the weirdest thing about process is that it's so individualistic that everyone's process is different. And this autofocus is, oh my God. Uh, yeah, stay, stay, stay like that. So I have a friend named Sam, uh, who I talk about a lot because I work with him and we talk all the time. So, His process is very similar to what you're describing. He will sit and write all of his emotions or like all of his thoughts on a particular thing out. He tries to like get as much as he can, as, as fast as he can onto the page. And he's cool with that because for him, writing is a lot of a process about Writing is a lot of a process about constructing a story out of your thoughts. It's not so much for him, like it's not, he, he's not a planner. He spews all the stuff out and then he goes back with what it, all the little bits that he has and he starts building a story out of them. In a lot of ways, it's, him putting words on the page is his way of brain brainstorming. I don't know how it is for you and I don't want to describe how, how your process is, but perhaps, perhaps you need to be a little bit more like me. <laughs> Arrogant. Uh, wow. This camera, I'm going to go back to the main screen. <laughs> Total, totally failed that camera is just not, Staying where I want it to at all. Ugh. So I used to be like that. I used to just want to write and not plan and just put as many words on the page as I could. And I found that I couldn't be productive doing that. Where for me, that just led to unfocused moments, moments of thinking. I mean, you see me right now, right? Me rambling and how there's, there's lots of blank space and thought space and, and unshaped thoughts coming out. So I found for me that the more time I spent thinking about it from the beginning, helps me not have to get blocked later on. If that makes sense. I go back and book it out. And I totally do that too. I just do it from, I do it from a different type of bulking out, I guess. Like for me, uh, my cousin, who's actually a writer, uh, she's a journalist. Uh, and I had a conversation about this one time where kind of one of the 
like the best way that we've sort of found to to do to write outlines and, and things like that are kind of you start from one basic idea and then you expand. So I mean, I need a, I need to show an example. So like for example, if our well, I mean, let's let's talk specifically about this story because it'll be easier. Um, in a lot of ways, you start off from a single sentence. You start off from, you know, a, a billionaire loses all his money and tries to summon the demon he made a bargain with in order to escape his fate. Something like that. Right? Yeah, totally. Uh, the art prompts. So for me, what I do is I'll take this and then I'll expand it out. So this is this is three things. This is billionaire loses all his money. He tries to summon the demon, and he wants to escape his fate. <laughs> yeah, that happens. My, my brain works faster than my hands can type. So now, what we have here is we start having the bones of an outline where we can just keep expanding. How does he summon the demon? What kind of bargain was it? He wants to escape his fate, how so? What is he aiming to get? What will he give up in order to get it? Um, how did he lose his money? Who did he lose his money to? All various yada yadas. But I find, I mean, I, I find for me that this, this, this sort of process, this process of, of writing something short and then making it bigger really helps me. It helps me stay focused better. Um, I can't do this view, man. I can't do it. <laughs> I hope. I hope that was. I hope that made sense. I'm used to not making sense. Nothing makes sense. Blah. Anyway. Uh, so the sirens are two to five monsters. They have, um, they are bird-like. They are mythological. Okay, I'm I'm glad it made sense. Um, I get all paranoid when I get rambly <laughs> because I lose track of where I started. So I'm not sure that if I like wherever I end it is really <laughs> where I need to end it. Um, it's, it's easier on the page. It's so much easier on the page to not do that. <laughs> uh, Bird-like voice. And there's a lot of things about harps and musical instruments. I'm just copying down details of uh, the general mythological stories around sirens so that I can write out a character profile of, of how I want this siren to be. Um,
Because knowing what your character wants and what they need and where they came from are all important are all important d decisions in the creation process. Um, in order to give your plot significance. Yeah, I think that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I'm totally bad for that, Fabugu. I am bad for ending up on somewhere completely different. Interesting. Sirens were called the muses of the lower world. That's an interesting thing to note. Okay. So we're going to start out with a basic character profile. So what do you kind of expect in a character profile? Well, you expect age. You expect uh, physical description. Um, uh, I guess we'll expand on this bit. Go you know, uh, age, sex. Race, height, weight, physical description, personality, likes, dislikes, education. I'm just writing out a general profile. Uh, not every single one of these is going to be relevant. Hey, DJ McNeil, what's going on, man? this up into uh, childhood, uh, teenage, uh, adolescent, that's better, and adult years. Okay. So obviously this isn't going to be perfect for every single character. I'm just gonna copy this a couple times so it's all there. Cool. I was just talking about process. Process is a hard thing, right? Because it's so different for everyone. And there's no there's no one way that works and it and it's a constant process of working on your process in a lot of ways, right? Like, I find I con I'm constantly experimenting. I'm constantly uh, adapting my process in new ways with every story uh, that, I, that I'm working on. Um, Feel free to talk about your process, DJ. I would like to know. Average, uh, average height, female, Greece. Yeah. So character profiles are extremely useful. Uh, they're a quick way to put out as much information about a character uh, as you can sort of thing. Um, a lot of the information in the character profile is not going to be used in the story and that's okay. Um, I've talked a lot about psychology um, and psychology is super important, important to writing. 
and it's super important to characters. Our psychology is all based upon the things that happen to us throughout our life, our experiences, our memories, how we dealt with situations, uh, all that stuff, and, and, I mean, decisions we make. So, in a lot of ways, if you want your character be, to be real, you need to detail out all those things. Those things that inform their character and their personality and how they interact with things. Your character is going to feel a lot more genuine. 5.5.25, five apparently. And I'll put that in metric for, for all you other people out there. Exactly. And it's, it's especially interesting because how, how a character looks can affect their personality, how other people react to their looks can affect their personality. And you can surprise people based on their assumptions that they make about a character based on their looks. Hmm. Yeah, that's cool. It's good to know I'm not crazy. <laughs> ah, this probably isn't useful as, as useful as I would have thought. Oh well. I'm just kind of going to try and hit some averages. Um, doing, doing some. Oh, hey, Stevie, what's up? Yeah, I gave you a sword. You're cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, so a few people have just shown up. Uh, I'm basically just working on uh, some character profiles for the short story I've been working on on stream. Um, Uh, we'll say probably around, well, she's a monster. She can weigh whatever she wants. Let's say one, 180. <laughs> uh, so many things, so many things. Right, uh, so this short story is called Fear the Siren. It's actually a classical fantasy, which I don't know if that's a real term. I made it up. But the gist is, is that it's a, um, it's a fantasy story that instead of being told in a medieval European style setting is actually told in a mythological Greek style setting. Um, the reason it's called classical is because uh, we tend to refer to uh, the Greek heyday as the classical era. Um, so with that being said, it has a much smaller feel to it than uh, a fantasy epic. It is revolving specifically around uh, pretty much around Greek mythological creatures 
and a lot of old ideas. Um, there is a Faustian deal that happens, uh, which is a, a folktale told from thousands of years ago in Germany. Um, stuff like that. But yeah, all fantasy. All fantasy, all the time. And yeah, it was totally inspired by a collective set of art prompts that I generated. Physical description. Physical description. Interesting. Okay. Greek mythology is important. I always talk about Greek mythology. Well, I mean, I'm doing a classical fantasy. So Greek mythology kind of just keeps coming up. <laughs> and I keep going on about it. And Drani goes, what are you talking about? Bruh. And I'm like, okay, I'll re-explain. <laughs> but yeah, I love, I love Greek mythology. I don't know as much about it as I probably should. I know mostly just just big things, more so than little detaily things. Uh, but you know, we get all there's also there's always something to learn. Yeah, and Sinbad makes perfect sense. Uh, Sinbad, um, Sinbad is really interesting because a lot of the old, old, old Sinbad stuff uh, in film is actually by the same guy who did Jason and the Argonauts. So a lot of Sinbad stuff is influenced by those themes. Uh, Jason and the Argonauts is, a, is one of the bigger Greek myth stories. Um, and there's a great adaptation by uh, Harry... Harry Harryhausen, who kind of revolutionized animation. <laughs> Sam Raimi. Cool. I, I like militaristic stuff. Uh, I don't know if you know it, but uh, I really like... Um, Matthew Riley's stuff, and I really like the, um, oh god, what's that guy's name? Richard, Richard, Richard something? I know it's here. Where are you? I hid it away somewhere. Oh, Rogue Warrior. That stuff, that stuff's really good. Maybe that's just me. Um, mortal, approximately, we'll say she's roughly, well, how long did the classical era last? Interesting question, Brendan. Uh, not that classical period. Johnny is my good friend, Stevie. She lectures me on feelings. And uh, I constantly challenge her to do art. <laughs> um, 200 years? I'll say she's approximately 300. Cool. Physical description. Physical descriptions. Are you, am I friends with any of Twitch writers? Uh, funny you should say that. <laughs> uh, my friend Stevie, who just showed up, is also a writer. Though she doesn't really stream writing on Twitch. <laughs> um, so yeah. Let's go description.
Other than that, uh, I don't actually spend that much time in writing streams. I spend more time in art streams, actually. Because uh, that's kind of how I got into Twitch Creative, so I'm friends with a bunch of artists. I also find... Well, maybe this is weird. But I, I find that when I'm on Twitch... I kind of prefer, prefer to branch out and look at things that I don't do so that I can learn about them more so than I do things that I can do. I don't know. Maybe that's a, uh, maybe that's a fallacy on my, maybe I should fix that. I don't know why this won't. Curses. Why, why you do this to me? Oh, there we go. I got it. I got there. We got there. You should do both. I know, Stevie. I know. I should. I should. I totally should. Bird line feet. For those who are later to tune in, I have the Wikipedia entry on sirens and lists of Greek mythological creatures open so that I can uh, do some do research on the go as we go. Um, middle the education is not relevant. Um, where did the sirens come from? Does anyone know? Like, do we know what their origin is? Or... Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> well, so the interesting thing is, is Borderlands is actually filled with weird references like that. Um, I mean, the place is called Pandora, for, for God's sake. Uh, though I don't think the sirens actually came from Pandora's box. Or at least not not what I see here. Uh, man, I, I totally thought I totally thought that I had more of this thought out in my head. Than I actually do. Um, uh, <laughs> and there's the head.
Is this how I saw Earl characters? Uh, no. I'm actually challenging myself to do the thing that I don't do. I don't generally do this all that much. But it's a good way to do it. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, I I might be really weird. Because I'm a premise guy, I tend to think of my characters in terms of uh, roles in the story. So like, I started off, I started off like, Well, I mean, I guess... Hmm. I'm trying to think of an example. Uh, so, like, I would start off with something like the heavy or the soldier um, or the siren. Main character. Uh, the wise man. Like, I tend to start off with roles more than anything else. And then fill out those characters as I go. I'm horrible at naming things, like atrocious at naming things, so I avoid it as long as possible. <laughs> uh, yeah, bad at it. I'm, I'm not good with emotions though, Stevie. I don't do I don't do super well with emotions. Just, I'm weird. I don't know. It is what it is. Oh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love names. I'm just. I I tend to sit on the name until I come up with something that I really think suits them. that how could you ever get respect well, the good thing with siren isn't the main character <laughs> good thing siren is not a main well, it's not the main character. She's a main character. She's not the protagonist. That's what I'm trying to say. She's not the protagonist. Just gonna keep working away. Actually, I'll take a five minute break to refill my water bottle, and then I'm gonna come back. Try to stream for like an hour. So yeah, take a five minute break and come back. So break time. All right. See y'all in a bit.
Oh yeah, I'm back. Oh, whoops. Oh my god. There we go. Whoops. <laughs> so, uh, what you're seeing here is the list of thing names of of sirens from different sources in Greek mythology. I'm kind of thinking we should pick from these for one of them, but, eh, I'm open to suggestions, I'm open to suggestions. Yeah, that's pretty common in Greek spelling. Um, killer for hire. So, wait, okay, yeah, for some reason I thought I had muted myself, I don't, I don't know, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, so he is going to be one of the Spartoi, which makes him, Fifty pounds, maybe. No, maybe. I don't know. I'm playing around with that. Uh, colorless. Again, Greek myth references, right? Um, the Spartoi were a group of Greek warriors that were born from the planted teeth of dragons, of a dragon, a specific one actually. That's totally true, Johnny. I mean, it's interesting to note that in uh, Asian culture specifically, much more so than uh, North America, I think North America pretty much doesn't do it at all, but in Asian cultures, people know what names mean. 
and they use them a lot. Um, they make a lot of comments about, you know, how someone reflects their name or doesn't reflect their name. Um, and I, I mean, I guess, I guess I'm interpreting a bit. Uh, I don't know if that's really true of general people. It's used a lot in manga and stuff like that. Um, so maybe, maybe that's not it's as true as I make it out to be. But there is something about that. About, about characters being known for the words that make up their name. Oh yeah, totally. But I mean, we believe heavily in astrology and, and certain things like that, so... It's hard to say. So yeah, I'm just trying to think out through some of this stuff. Um, uh, he probably looks about 30-ish. Uh, keeping in mind, in this sort of era, people don't live as long. So d ages are interpreted a little bit differently. And there are five Spartai who are named, uh, who helped found the City of Thebes. Now the City of Thebes, Thebes, there's a difference. So really, uh, um, a main theme that I'm playing with with this with this story is the idea of monsters, Greek Greek monsters specifically, but just monsters, people who are non-human. And a lot of what it means to be a monster. I mean, yeah, maybe, maybe I should show some images of what people have, well, 
I want to show some images of how people have interpreted sirens. The problem is, is like most uh, paintings based in Greek mythology, uh, there's a lot of nudity. <laughs> Maybe I can find something that's good. Huh. That's interesting. Well, I can show a little bit. I'm not gonna... Oh. Just gonna flip through this real quick. There's a lot of weirdness. Anyway. Uh, the gist is, is that there's a lot of snake-like references here and mermaid references, but the Siren Song and all that was more so to be a, was more so to be bird-like. So I find it really interesting that there's a lot of fish references when really there shouldn't be, not in the same way. So I kind of want to get away from that, that sort of mermaid-like image a lot. No, they were not. They were not mermaids. But they were trying to, to sing to lower men into the water. That, that part is true. kind of the thing, right? We we make interpretive decisions based on assumptions, especially for things like this. Um, wow, that's all, all bad. Yeah, let me fix that real quick. So no, the sirens were bird-like, like a bird song. Cause you know, the, them fish that can sing, no, <laughs> no, um, yeah. Uh, it depends. It depends, Johnny. Uh, sometimes they're described as beautiful. Sometimes they're not. But mostly it's the song. Uh, and the song is explicitly... Um, the song is explicitly something that ends to, in a bad conclusion. Um, so yeah. The end of the song is death. Hmm. 
Interesting. Yeah. Sorry. Have things on the go. Death metal siren. So it's an interesting concept though, right? Where the siren song is supposed to be not sad, but it's supposed to be sweet and irresistible. And I wonder, I mean, I wonder if the song is different to whoever hears it. Because music, like most arts, is individualistic. We have likes and dislikes. So, wouldn't it make sense that in order to make something that's irresistible to everyone, it would have to change? Hard to say, right? Uh, he's gonna be short, probably. Probably in the five. Four range is probably fairly light. So maybe somewhere in the 110 range. Makes sense to me. I mean, that's not a done deal, Johnny. I was just saying that you know, who knows, right? Who knows? Uh, fonts are, yeah. How are they? Thinking, I'm thinking a thing. What am I thinking? Yeah, but that's pretty small for a male, um, which is kind of the point. Yes, Mr. Dumbness is a fawn. This is going to be kind of a rich 
ancient Roman, ancient Greek sort of style nobleman, I guess. Um, so he's going to be kind of obese. And balding. Um, a little bit arrogant. Uh, and greedy. about Greek education. Um, I know there were schools, I know there were universities, or concepts similar to universities. Uh, I don't know what the, who went where and why sort of thing. strokes putting down the ideas that I do have off the top of my head and uh, expanding out interesting there's a nobleman Sorry, I'm thinking. Thinking. I figure out who who are these characters? What do they want? What do they do? What do they hope for? What do they dream about? Yeah, blue bloods. Totally. Uh, of the king's horses and husbandry made lots of money tutors as a child bit of university as a young adult. How did he lose his money? Well, there was a series of unfortunate events.
the demon ran out. King's favorite horse. Was killed. And I make sounds. I make lots of sounds. I apologize for the sounds. Fire in the stables. Injured. Many more. Out of favor with the king. He lost his prosperity. <laughs> Thanks, Ronnie. I'm glad I have your permission for that. One one important thing I'm missing in this uh, in these character profiles, and that's their wants and their needs in regards to the story. Yeah, I don't play music much, mostly because it distracts me. Um, I mean, I could, I could change that, I guess, if I wanted to. It's also a lot to do with, um, music just complicates uploading to different places. Because <laughs> uh, copyright is weird. <laughs> Hella weird. Um, so yeah. But yeah, feel free to listen to your own music. I do not mind. I mean, no, please, you have to listen in silence. Perfectly still, doing nothing. I, I kid, I kid. Um, what does he want? He wants to restore the status quo, so he wants to become rich again. He wants his former glory. What does he need? Hmm. I'm not sure yet. I think the need is going to be expressly connected to Expressly connected, expressly connected to the ending.
Okay, what do you what do you want? What's the need? That's a random thought. <laughs> I forgot I made this. came to me, but it did. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know enough about Professor Lockhart to, uh, to qualify that, unfortunately. Harry Potter fan. I know, blasphemy. Won't happen, Johnny, unfortunately. Thinking through it. I think I've seen four of the movies. Yeah, I think four. First three and then number five. Yeah, I think so. Well, did I see number three? I don't know if I saw number three. Can't remember.
I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> Sorry, Johnny. I don't know. Um, hmm. Thinking. Thinking. Yeah, feel free to interrupt me, anyone. Uh, trying to state it a little bit more that I kind of get in my zone. And uh, I seem unapproachable, but I'm really not. Ask questions, give me suggestions. Um. <laughs> yeah, we're good on the demon. There's a couple of really cool demons I was looking at from Greek mythology. And maybe I'm going a little heavy handed with the references. Um, but there were a couple of really cool ones that had to do with uh, interesting ideas of revenge and um, protecting certain types of people, things like that. And I kind of do. I've been thinking about that. Um, so yeah, there's, there's, you know, uh, vampiric demons in Greek mythology, uh, vampires, super old. Um, there are where's the one I liked? Where are you? Charis, a spirit of violent or cruel death. Um, I know there's more. Oh yeah, the Furies. The Furies are always cool. Female spirits of curses. I don't know. Interferers. If I can spell. Well, let's just say interlopers.
Mm, you're kind of right. Um, in a certain sense, because I'm going for a, a Faustian style, they kind of have half. They kind of have to be humanized in a certain way. Uh, otherwise, where's the benefit? What do they get out of making a deal? Um, I mean, I could be wrong. Keep in mind, we haven't really specified how we're going to deal with demons in the story. Do they have specific rules? Oh, right. Uh, so Faust is a very ancient story. Uh, popularly interpreted a ton of times. Uh, kind of a classic Greek legend sort of thing. Um, he makes a pact with the devil, exchanging a soul for knowledge, uh, dies a horrible, horrible death. There's a, quite a few interpretations. The one I know is the Christopher Marlowe one, which is a super old one. Christopher Marlowe, Christopher Marlowe being a contemporary of Shakespeare. Um, possibly his greatest rival. Actually, in some interpretations, Christopher Marlowe is Shakespeare. Uh, it gets a little weird, you know, there's a lot of controversy over who Shakespeare was, who actually did the writing, um, you know, it's a different time. I mean, I have humanized them a lot right here, but there's, that's not to say that that's the final interpretation of the demon. Um, just making a note for myself. I think... Um, yeah. I, well, I mean, keep in mind, Johnny, that people didn't live, a live as long in that time, and they also started life stages earlier. Like, I'm just about 25. In that society, I'd probably be married with a couple of kids and have finished my apprenticeship and a few other things. Uh, whereas in our society... I'm kind of getting to the, the peak years, the years where you start doing those things. <laughs> uh, I guess. I mean, I'm not doing those things. but <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. I think it depends on how much the demon actually shows up in this story. He's a character, yes. He's going to be referred to a lot. Uh, especially by the billionaire. A few other things. Um, but it depends if I actually write him into a scene, right? I haven't decided yet. So... Ooh, that's a good question. I don't know. So, the way I was thinking was, um, because sirens are immortal, I was thinking that the siren would have some sort of backstory with the demon. With something the demon has done in the past. Um... Right now, I'm playing a little bit about. I'm playing a little bit with the idea of uh, the sirens being cursed because of the abduction. Of, blah, blah, blah. Sirens being cursed because of the abduction of Persephone. 
So perhaps that, that demon has something to do with her curse. Um, that's something I was de definitely thinking about playing with. Uh, Persephone, uh, she is a goddess, a daughter of Zeus. I think she's a goddess. Pretty sure she's a goddess. She's one of the, uh, one of the references that a lot of uh, several writers make. Oh yeah, here we go. She's daughter of Zeus and the harvest queen, the harvest goddess of Demeter and is queen of the underworld. She was married to Hades. Anyway, I th there's a story, I think, where she gets abducted. Yeah. Right. Now I remember. Thank you. Thanks, Daz. Um, yeah, she's cursed to spend half the year, half the year with Hades. Uh, which is why uh, we have the seasons. <laughs> yeah. Really. Hmm. Persephone. Yeah, you're right. You are correct. I think I interpreted that right. No, that seems to be uh, that seems to be the the pronunciation. I'm just, I'm horrible at pronunciation of it, everything, including English words. So, you know, fair enough. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, so she was abducted by Hades, and then the sirens were cursed uh, because of it, or were cursed to find her, and didn't, um, because they were, apparently they're handmaidens. I mean, Greek... Greek myth is so interpretive, um, and there's so many different sources. Um, so many different sources that say con conflicting things. <laughs> it gets really difficult. Um, but because I'm playing around with the themes, um, yeah, we've spoken before, Erica. Um, I'm excited. Send me a message on one of my accounts. Oh, never mind. You know what I'm gonna do? I'll I will follow you. I will follow you after the stream because I want to see what you're doing. Oh, okay, cool, cool. I will check it out. I will take a look. Um, God, train of thought. So I want, uh, oh right, that's what I was saying. So because I'm playing with the, the idea of what it means to be a monster as a, as a main theme, or as a theme, uh, having the siren deal with her curse is important to me. So having things that are related to that curse and how that curse plays out matters.
Yeah. You're right. You're right. Oh, I, I, I did. I, I, I did. It's on my, my notepad here. I got you, Johnny. Don't worry. I don't know if the other writers in the room are like me, but sometimes I, f or often I find that I work better on, on paper than I do on a word processor. So I spend a lot more time working, like I prefer to write things because it helps me think. So I do a lot of that. When, when I'm doing this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. As soon as you said it, I remembered the story. Um, yeah. As soon as you said it, I remembered. But that kind of makes it cool, right? Because... Because most of the demons in Greek mythology come from the underworld, that just gives it extra links. Because what I'm thinking now um, now that I'm thinking through it, it might be really cool to have the demon want to escape to take revenge on Persephone. <laughs> that was bad. Uh, to take revenge on her. Because she cares for the sirens despite the curse. Well, she wasn't the one who cursed them anyway, so. <laughs> well, no one watches TV or movies anyway, Drani, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Only at Christmas time. TV Christmas movies are like a thing. I don't know why. Uh, yeah. I mean, what this sounds like to me is it sounds like I need to do more research, which is cool. I mean, research is an important part of the writing process. You should be doing research. If you're not doing research, you're probably doing something wrong. Um, the only exception to that, the only exception to that being if you are legitimately an expert in a subject or have spent time uh, researching something in general for a different project, then I don't think you necessarily need to re-research, but, you know, it is what it is. They get through stuff. All right, it's 10 after 9, so I'm going to take another quick break. Uh, run to the bathroom. <laughs> uh, but then I will come back and I will... So here's what's going to happen for the rest of the show. Uh, I'm going to come back and I'm going to briefly go over what I've done with the characters. Uh, just give it a quick review. Eh, interesting, interesting. Yeah, um, the two sources that, that I've seen listed here, I mean, I need to do some more specific uh, scholarly research on this. I just have the Wikipedia page open at the moment just to give me a general idea. Uh, they seem to be cursed by Demeter, uh, who is the mother of, of Persephone. But yeah, um, we'll see. We'll play around with it. I mean, we'll talk about that. 
After the break, though. After the break. I gotta... I do a couple things. Um, so yeah, when I come back, we're gonna do a brief review. Maybe ask a few more questions. See what we can do. Uh, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about... Uh, some of the other stuff that I've been doing around on here. Just briefly, just to go over a few things. And then I'm gonna call it a night. So it'll probably end around quarter to 10, 9.30, quarter to 10. We'll figure it out, we'll figure it out. It's all good, I'm gonna take another quick break though. So I'll see y'all in a bit. All right, coming back. So yeah. So you bring up an interesting point, Erica, when you say, I assume you're saying creating your own worlds. I think that's an okay assumption. Um, but yeah, it's, Fantasy is, is a genre that needs a lot of research. Um, it's one of those things where even though you're creating your own wor worlds and you're making up your own, your own societies and cultures, knowing how cultures develops is important. Knowing how language develops is important. And Yes, you're creating those things and creating those societies, but you almost need to look at how that stuff is developed in our own society to give you a basis to create. Um, it's also important in a lot of ways to be aware of what's out there especially in that genre, know what tropes and what people do and don't know offhand. Uh, stuff like that's important. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just a thought I had. And I apologize again. I am horrible with pronunciation. Absolutely a 
It is what it is. So, um, in this story, I have. Oh well, I have a protagonist who is the killer for hire. Uh, I wonder if this focus is working again. Are you working? Maybe. Still being weirdly unfocused. I th yeah, it's probably this color. It's too light. Damn it. Oh well. Go back to this then. Um. So I have a pr protagonist who's a killer for hire. I have. Oh, sorry. What am I thinking? That's that's not true. Sorry. The perspective character is the killer for hire. And the protagonist is actually the siren. The antagonist is the demon. And then supporting cast or the billionaire. The goblins. The fawn and the king. I haven't really spent much time outlining the king. I don't think he's super important. Um, I think he's more of a passing reference than anything else. And the goblins are kind of nameless, faceless at the moment. And I'm probably going to keep them that way. I don't know, maybe. The goblins are tough because I haven't really decided how I want them to play out. figure it out. I think, I think they're a character I need to write. I just need to write them in a scene and, and it'll come to me. Um, Right, I need some powers. <laughs> uh, the goblins are thugs and muscle. They are indeed. Um, the goblins were actually, I plan to have them be uh, sent by the demon to get the feather. Sent by the demon to get the feather. There's going to be a magic feather, by the way. Magic feather.
That's an interesting idea, Taz. Um, the feathered Icarus. I was I was actually thinking it would be a feather from the siren, because the siren is a bird. Has wings, you know. I think the feather of Icarus is a little too loaded for me, to be honest. <laughs> but I will note it. It is noted. So the fawn uh, is actually, at least from the way that the prompts were drawn, the fawn is a uh, sacrifice in as part of the demon summoning ritual. Right, but there, no matter what reference, like, um, no, the goblins are changing for the feather drawing. Um, there's only two to five sirens in existence. Like, people seem to agree that it's a number between two and five. A bunch of different sources. And they were all created at once because they were cursed because of the Persephone thing. Um... So there wouldn't really be a first one, or she would already be one of the first ones. So, I guess that interpretation is all is valid either way. Um, but you're right. Um, I mean, you you. I think we're thinking along similar lines because the fawn. Uh, is actually an information broker to the killer for hire. Like he gives he the kill the merc. I'm gonna call him merc. God damn it. The merc uh, goes to the fawn in order to figure out where the siren is because he's been hired to assassinate her. Um, feather. Symbol. Yeah. <laughs> I've never played the wolf among us, uh, unfortunately. It's always something I've wanted to play. I was super into fables in general. Uh, that's technically considered part of the fables universe. And I'm a huge fan of Telltale. So. But I suppose, um, yeah, it's based on fables, isn't it? Is it not? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry, you had me worried there. I was like, I got all confused. I think I own it. Maybe I should play that. Hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, well, I'm super impressed by Telltale in general. They are excellent, excellent storytellers. Um, yeah. I do own it. I will play it. <laughs> Hidden, forbidden lore. I'm writing down all the stuff you're saying, Taz. So I'm into it. I don't know if that's the direction I want to take. But I'm writing it down. Because suggestions are always important. Keep in mind, this is going to be a short story and not a novel, so it's, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be cut for time, right? Um, I 
Yeah, uh, there is Stevie. Mostly it's because I get way too distracted with music on. Uh, and also because of copyright with posting to multiple uh, sites. I have been meaning to do some search for like some stuff that would work on both YouTube and Twitch, but I haven't found the time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But yeah, uh, I get mad distracted with music on. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that YouTube, um, YouTube won't actually silence it. What it'll do, it'll it'll monetize your your videos, which is worse. Um, Twitch muting, I'm not nearly as worried about because I use the Twitch Spotify playlist for like my breaks and stuff. Uh, so that's fine. That stuff all all works good. Um, and yeah, and they'll only mute the VOD. Which is fine. But yeah. I, I have a bit of a problem with people monetizing my videos. I'm not, I'm not into that. But yeah, it, feel free to listen to your own music. I'm cool with that. Um, I, I encourage that. It's one of those things where, you know, the stuff I like isn't necessarily the stuff anybody else likes. And I want... I want you all to be creating and comfortable and doing your thing while you're watching. Yeah, no, it's all good, DJ. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just because the problem is, is, is that stuff that's uh, copy, like stuff that's okay to stream on Twitch is not the same as stuff that's okay for YouTube. And there's not really a common list in between them. Yeah, go ahead, Stevie. No problem. I will give you advice. I'm full of advice. Sure. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. I like orchestras. I like seeing orchestras. <laughs> the problem is, is I get so... I get really moody when it comes to music. Like, I want to listen to a specific thing at a specific time. And I tend to listen to a lot of foreign music and instrumentals and different things, uh, jumping around a lot, and it's not, it's not really the greatest to listen to. That being said, Stevie does a pretty good job with it, I guess. I like her taste a lot. We have similar taste. Yeah. But yeah, but like... <laughs> When, when music's playing, I spend more time listening to the music than I spend doing, like, I ignore all of the other things. Like, I ignore chat, and I, I ignore chat, and I ignore, uh, I ignore a lot of, a lot of the other stuff going on when I'm listening to music. Like, I can concentrate on the writing, but I ignore the talking, and, like, it, it just becomes harder for me to do all that other stuff. Because I get really into the music. Come on, Stevie. Give me, give me the question. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Uh, okay. We have similar taste. We really do. I think mine's a little bit more eclectic, but our Spotify playlists are, are not as different as you'd think. <laughs> um. 
Oh, I'm gonna be really, really funny here. I am stuck on a scene where I have ex-military characters clearing through a deserted strip club and I need to up the tension and introduce two characters. But I just got really stuck. Not sure how to orchestrate the induction of the two characters. There's two mercs. One of them used to know the MC. He is sympathetic. And the other merc is violent and will take her down on sight. Ooh. Oh, whoops. Uh, I'm going to be super contradictory, Stevie. I'm going to say don't. Have the other character find her first. Have, yeah, I want, uh, okay, so the way I'm thinking about it is, yeah, but you, but you can do that, you can do that without doing the sort of tropey having, helping her escape thing. Um, The way in which he cuts out her tongue matters. I think it matters a lot more than than the escape thing. Does that make sense? Am I am I thinking about this weird? Um, but yeah, I, I I want the other player. I want the other guy to find her first. I want her him to kind of like go all gung ho and then. You kind of see how hesitant the nonviolent one is. And through that hesitation, when he's asked to um, cut out her tongue, you know, he's kind of the type who like, who like apologizes as he does it. And, and stuff like that. Um... Do I have any other thoughts? Do I have any other thoughts? I think it's more powerful if you reveal his human side in those tense moments than doing this kind of escape thing. Because I feel like the escape thing is a little done. Yeah, it does, right? Like, you, you kind of eliminate that weird, like, I suppose it just depends on how it's done. You kind of eliminate a lot of that weird, uh, like, oh, I'm the bad guy, but I'm really a good person, so I'm going to help you sort of thing. And you get to this, like, no, I'm a bad guy, but I'm not a bad guy. I don't know. I like that name, Daz. It's cool, man. Uh, the short story is tentatively titled Fear the Siren. Uh, because, yeah. It's, it's kind of about... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah well I, I was kind of playing on uh we talked about this last stream about titles but i was kind of playing on uh the idea of the siren's call and also on old monster movies and uh stuff like that where you know the demon fears the siren that's what starts the whole thing the demons fear sends the billionaire to hire the killer for hire who then goes to try and assassinate the siren 
who sets off a chain of events, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, playing off a little bit of that weird, what it means to be a monster. What do monsters fear? Oh, that's totally great advice. The name should be the central component of the story that is missing from the story. And, and I think that's exactly what this title kind of did for me. Was it, it consolidated everything that I was thinking about. Like all those weird unlabeled things in the back of my head. And it, it kind of is that. Because there's not going to be a, a moment where people admit they're, they're afraid of the siren or whatever else. But it's, it's going to be fairly implied or at least able to be interpreted um so yeah i think i think it does that in a, in a certain sense i could be wrong i'm often wrong <laughs> need to remind myself every now and again oh you're not dumb drani you're just different. You don't you don't write. <laughs> and you're totally right, Taz. I mean that is even more true in Greek myths than it is in, in the way that we we deal with demons nowadays. Um, I mean Greek myths are, are manifestations of you know, things like vengeance. And fury and uh, all that other like like that's what that's what demons literally are in Greek mythology. So that makes total sense. So then, what what emotion is this demon reflecting? Wait, can I be bi artistical as well? I, I am a musician. I play music sometimes and stuff. I can kind of draw, I guess. Not really. <laughs> not really. <laughs> Let's be honest, not really. Um, yeah. Yeah, totally. Uh, I play guitar and piano. I was in a ton of bands in high school and stuff. Uh, uh, yeah, I was in a couple of jazz bands playing guitar, saxophone, uh, and clarinet. And I was in a school band playing clarinet. And I was in a couple other bands, like some local stuff. and. I had my own, my own jazz band, which is like a four-piecer, where I played guitar and sax, um, stuff like that. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, I suppose. Taz. I mean, that makes sense. But I guess, I guess the important key there is what, what usefulness does the curse have? And what's the fallout of, of it not being there?
<laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna do my wrap up. I think that's all the thoughts I got about characters for now. Um, so normally this would be the time when I would talk about the accidental book club, but I've been having a lot of trouble recently. Um, if you missed the beginning of the stream, I was talking a lot about conversations I've been having with friends of mine about streaming and what I'm doing and what I'm doing wrong or right or whatever, you know, feedback. And no one talks about the book club. I'm the only person who ever talks about the book club. Um, I like the idea of the book club, but it's really hard for me to stay on task with homework like that. And I'm not doing very well at it. <laughs> and I honestly don't think many people are reading along with me. So I'm thinking of cutting the book club in general. That being said, thanks to Stevie's awesome suggestion, I might actually be pitching the same idea to a writing website uh, as a column. Because I think it'd be more interesting to them than it would be to, to a stream. Um, no, um, it's actually a book club about, it's, a, it's so the, the pitch is, is that I have a ton of books on my shelf uh, about writing that I've never read. Because like most people, if I buy a book and don't touch it for two weeks, it just sits on the shelf and I never touch it again. <laughs> uh, so that being said, I think there's a lot of stuff in there that's really awesome. And I've read parts of some of them that have really changed the way I look at, at, at writing and, and other artistic pursuits. So, yeah, everyone does. <laughs> totally. Um, so I originally started off with the idea that I would read kind of like one every two weeks or one every month or, or something like that and, and talk about them on stream. But... It felt a little too forced and it's one of those things where, you know, people watching Twitch don't really do homework <laughs> all the time. Uh, so it's kind of unreasonable to expect people to read along with me and stuff like that. Uh, but I like the idea. So I'm going to pitch it to a writing website, which I think would actually be a much better audience for it where, you know, people can, can digest it at will and see what you're saying. And, uh, yeah, so that was my plan. Um, yeah, that's my plan. Anyway, uh, yeah, thoughts. It's hot. These lights are really hot. Oh my God. Uh, thank God it's not ridiculously warm here today. Because the last couple streams, or the last couple weeks, I have been literally melting. <laughs> yeah, uh, and it's interesting that you mentioned that, CD. Uh, I'm planning on having a guest on in a couple weeks. Well, I only do like one stream a week, so uh, I think that's fair. Um, totally. Um, and I will be doing that, Taz. Uh, if you missed the beginning of the stream, I guess I'll just reiterate kind of my plan. Uh, next week is my birthday. Uh, on the 11th. So the stream on the 10th is actually going to be a birthday stream. Yay! Go me! Um, and I have plans for that. Uh, super secret fun plans and I will let people know as they need to know but it's going to be it's not going to be writing per se just so you know um. <laughs> uh, but that week I'm off I took a week off from work paid vacation good, t good things <laughs> all good Taz no worries um so I'm going to do um, drafting every day for that week on stream. And I'm going to do a lot of that. I'm going to read, uh, I'm going to read, I'm going to write, 
I'm gonna talk about what I'm doing and my like thought process as I write. Um, try and get that out there. Try and be productive. Keep me to a schedule, as it were. And I will be posting something in my Discord. Uh, if you're not a member of my Discord, you can join. It's almost never used, but I'm hoping it will be soon. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna post a, a straw poll or something like that on Discord. Uh, so people can vote what time would be best for me to stream. Um, because I'm going to have free time. So, yeah, I'm really excited. And then at the end of that week, on the Sunday, yeah, I'm going to, it's probably not going to be evenings. It's probably going to be afternoons, Johnny. So on the Sunday of that week, I'm going to have a special guest. And um, my friend Sam is going to come on and we're going to talk about writing. And he's going to interview me, and hopefully it'll be good. <laughs> I'm hoping it'll be good. But yeah, uh, so we're going to talk about what I've done that week, and sort of process, and whatever. I'm kind of leaving it up to him to come up with topics, uh, more so than me planning it, so that it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting for me. He'll ask good questions. He's a, he's a, he's a very good guy for that stuff. So uh, yeah, I'm planning on doing that. So uh, yeah, I think that I think that's everything. I think I've got everything. Yes. I hope not. <laughs> I hope not, Johnny. I told him to tone it down. <laughs> that we need to not be so academic all the time. <laughs> so yeah. Um, I think that's it for me for today. I've been going for almost three hours. I usually call three hours my max. Um, I think it's been fairly productive. I've detailed out a lot of character thoughts. I've got a lot of questions. I love, I love questions. Questions are my jam. <laughs> you can be academic with me anytime you want, Stevie. Um, I don't know, Rob Z, what are you doing? What are you doing? Forgetting my stream? Mm, disappoint. Um, yeah. So I think that's it for me. I think I covered all the things off my agenda. Um, oh yeah, shout outs, right. Um, so if you want to check out any of the previous episodes, you can go to my website, which is down here. Oh, I had the point so much better last week. I'm failing at it this week. Yeah. So yeah, if you head up to my website, uh, they have all the VODs of the previous episodes, uh, as well as on Twitch channel, I've made them highlights. Um, there's also various links of things that I found useful or interesting uh, in regards to the topic of the week. Uh, and uh, past work I've done on uh, the short story and some other stuff. Uh, there's also links there to contact me via Twitter, email, whatever, uh, and feel free. Let me know what you think of the show. Let me know, think of what I'm doing. If you have suggestions, whatever, let me know. I'm all good. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I probably have too many mods for the amount of people who actually show up. <laughs> That's okay. It's okay. It's a, it's a representation of my love. There you go. Feel loved. Hearts. Um. So yeah. Uh, my name is Brendan. This has been Accidental Origin. Thanks for coming and chilling me, guys. Thanks for joining for the host. Thanks for Stevie, to Stevie for actually uh, showing up this time. Subtle dig. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I will catch you all later. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> Peace out, y'all.